it's time to start with uh, another interactive example and this is example 3.8 which is very comprehensive example 3.8 is very comprehensive example and this example let me read the statement the example is basically saying an uncharged metal sphere of radius r is placed in an otherwise uniform electric field e which is equal to e naught in the z direction the field will push positive charge to the northern hemisphere the northern hemisphere is basically the top side of this sphere leaving a negative charge on the southern hemisphere southern hemisphere is basically the southern part of the sphere it is basically the lower part in along the minus z then this induced charge in turn distorts the field in the neighborhood of the sphere find the potential in the region outside the sphere so we are supposed to find out the potential outside the sphere and this thing is let me uh, draw the field lines first and then the sphere in it This is the x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis and we have placed the sphere exactly at the origin here. So it is somehow something like this configuration. Okay, here it will be. So it is somehow like this. Okay, though I haven't plotted it very symmetric, but it is uh, symmetric over here. And this is the radius R. Now, what about the field lines? The field lines are basically uh, straight here. So they are, means they are lines, means the field is in the Z direction. This is E equals e naught in the z direction so e naught is constant it means these are constant lines along the z direction but what will happen so these are means when the sphere is not there then the lines are like this and when we will put the sphere then the lines will be distorted so it is somehow like this when we put the sphere then what will happen that uh, this is an uncharged sphere means it's neutral sphere here so what will happen that these lines they will distort and they will become uh, like this so let me uh, let me use another color in order to show these lines let's say this line is far from it so it will be uh, almost a straight line going in here while this line which is close to it then it will be a little bit distorted like here when it comes into the vicinity of this sphere it will be a little bit distorted similarly this line when it comes into the vicinity of this one it will be a little bit distorted while means now the actual lines are basically this color when I come to this line then this line will slightly go into it similarly this line will go into it and this line is straight while this line will slightly go here while this line will also tilt here similarly these okay so here while when we go outside of here so this line will slightly go 
out like here means it will be something like this similarly this one and similarly this one while here we will have lines the lines will tilt like this although we don't have symmetric lines like two on this side and three on this side but it gives the idea while in the figure the book is where the figure is very clear in the book so here xyz here we have and further that when we go far from this sphere then v goes to e naught and this is z and plus c a constant so far from the sphere we will again have those straight line and we are supposed to find out the field here now due to this interaction of the field with this metal sphere it's metal but it's neutral then it will uh, cause to develop some charges here induced charges and they are minus charges being induced here and as a result it will shift those charges to the we call this the upper hemisphere and this is the lower part of this in your book it is calling this one northern and this one southern uh, side of the sphere so we are supposed to find out the field outside of this sphere when it is placed in a uniform field like this so one thing we are uh, sure about the boundary condition the first boundary condition is saying that v is equal to zero the potential is zero when r is equal to r when we reach the surface of the sphere then the potential is zero because it is a uniform it is a neutral neutral metal sphere placed in an electric field and the minus and the plus charges developed there due to the field interaction are resulting into zero means they are equal and opposite in magnitude so we have another boundary condition here and that boundary condition is that we will go to e naught we will go to e naught and r cos theta r cos theta when r is very very greater than r when we are far from the sphere then it will go to e naught this one keep in mind that e naught is the magnitude while r cos theta is basically the z component when we calculate the z component here of the field then the z component along this one this is r cos theta this component is r cos theta so we are having the field this much r we are having here then far from the sphere the constant will go to zero and z will be equal to r cos theta z equal to r cos theta so now what about our equations or equations are that we are having the solution of this equation that when uh, let me write our uh, solution v of r theta this is equal to summation on l from 0 to infinity and a l r to power l plus b l over r l plus 1 and p l of cos theta now we will have to see here when we put r equals to r when r is equal to r then we are having v equal to zero v of r theta is equal to zero so this implies that a l r to the power l plus b l r to the power l plus one and p l of cos theta 
is equal to 0. This means that this thing is non-zero. So this thing is equal to 0. When this thing is equal to 0, then this implies that AL that AL is to the power n r power L plus B L R L plus 1 is equal to 0. This implies I can find BL in the form of this one. So BL here will be equal. When this will go the other side, it will become minus ALRL. And when we multiply the RL plus 1 with this one, then we will get minus AL and R. And is one L is here and one L this will go and multiply with this one then it will become 2 L plus 1 so we have written B L in the form of um, A L and then this reduces our equation that V of R theta is equal to summation on L from 0 to infinity and this is A L then we have R L here because the value of this is R L and then for the B L I can write R 2 L plus 1 divide by R L plus 1 and P L of cos theta. So this we have finally reached uh, with the first boundary condition. Now what about the second boundary condition? Because we will have to apply the boundary condition and reduce our uh, solution. So for R very very greater than R, we know that the potential for r very very greater than r the potential is equal to e naught r cos theta so this will come out to be when r is very very greater than r then what will happen to our equation when this r is very very greater than this one then it means that this term will go to zero it will be neglected it will reduce as we go away from r so it means that we are left with summation on L from 0 to infinity and AL R for L. The other term is 0 and PL of cos theta. PL of cos theta. And this thing is equal to minus E naught minus e naught of uh, r cos theta okay one thing here we have forgotten minus here and we have forgotten minus here so this will be equal to minus e dot and r cos theta now if i look means this side is equal to this side so if I look clearly to this one, then I see that how many terms of PL are involved in this solution. So if I look that there is one term involved because P naught cos of theta, this will be equal to 1, which is not here. Here I am having cos theta. Cos theta is basically P1 of cos theta is equal to cos theta so it means that only l equal to 1 is uh, in this solution so this is a1 a0 is not there a1 and r to the power 1 so look here from here it is evident that when p1 of cos theta is cos theta then r power 1 is r so a1 is basically minus e0 this is a1 while this is r this is 
cos of theta p1 cos of theta so i can the rest of all ans when this will sum or up to infinite number of terms they are all zero except p1 except l equal to 1 so i can write that v of r theta v of r theta is equal only one term is there so that one is now put the value of a l no no need of summation because only one value is present there so it is a1 and a1 is equal to minus e naught and then r to the power 1 so this is r and then minus minus this will be r and l power is 1 sub so r power 3 it will be and this will become r power 2 and p 1 of cos theta is basically cos theta so finally we have the solution of the potential equal to this now if i look closely to this solution then it is sum of two things this is equal to minus e naught and r cos theta and then plus e naught e naught and r cube or r square r cube over r squared and cos of theta now these two terms basically specifies what e naught r cos theta it is basically that field which is the external field it is that interaction of the field with the metal sphere so it is that interaction field and this one e naught this one is it is positive so it means it is the positive induced charge the charge which it has moved up there and this is e naught r cube r cos theta dimensions are both are the same because this is r cube and this is r square so it is again r so it means that this is the induced charge component which is positive and we can find we can find the induced charge on uh, this system by applying the usual equation we have done it so many times that sigma of theta is equal to minus epsilon naught and partial v over partial r it r equals r means this on the surface we calculate the induced charge and then this will be equal to minus epsilon naught so minus here and this is v of r so minus minus become plus and epsilon naught e naught it will come here then it's a derivative of this one so r derivative will come out to be equal to 1 and then minus the derivative of this 1 over r square will become minus 1 over r and it will thus become plus and this will be uh, the derivative of this uh, again uh, calculate this one this is 1 over r q r square so if i move it uh, up then it will be r, r minus 2 and then minus 2 r and minus 2 minus 1 so it will become minus 2 r minus 3 so it will come when down then it will become r cube and here i will have 2 r cube over r cube plus 2 here and cos of theta will come as it is is there is no differential on this one so we have the 2 r cube here and if we do simplify this one then it will come out to be 1 this is r cube plus 2r sub 8r equal to r we are going to calculate this one so when r 
equals to r cube these two cancel then 1 plus 2 is 3 so 3 epsilon naught 3 epsilon naught and e naught cos of theta so this is basically a uh, big thing the induced charge we have calculated to be equal to this and this is as expected it is positive the induced charge always comes out to be negative this one is positive and positive means it is basically the contribution of this term or the movement of the positive charges or the induction of the positive charges on the northern uh, hemisphere or the northern part of this sphere so this concludes the solution of this example